right, guys. Today we are going to be mixing up the God Guide series a little bit. And we are going to be trying to move over. This is going to be our first attempt at playing the God Guides in Ranked. Playing the God Guides in Ranked is something that I never did in the past because so many games were liable to be a 10-minute F6. But I haven't had a game F6 in Ranked all month long, which means that this is going to be a 10-minute F6 because I decided to try to do a God Guide in Ranked in order to give it a better matchmaking experience and be more realistic on the fact that sometimes, you know, you're going to get pounded in lane and how to play from behind and all that kind of stuff, which is also useful to people. So we're going to be playing Apollo here. Traditionally, an ADC in Smite. We're going to grab his one at level one, which is also the ability we're going to max out first. And for our starting build, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves Cowl, moving into a Devo Gloves. I did have a bit of a dilemma at the start between buying Cowl and buying Destal. Because Apollo does have mana struggles, and the death toll makes his life so much easier on the mana front. But with Apollo passive giving you that bonus attack speed, the faster you can get that passive built up, the better. And it really ups the ante on his in-lane damage. So I did opt here for that Leather Cowl, even though it is going to put me out of mana differential in the beginning and i'm gonna make up for that by grabbing myself that early dominance in that second slot which we actually talked about uh, a little bit as well in the and her guide which you should check out if you didn't get a chance to watch it by the time that this video is coming out and if you missed that video you might have missed it because you weren't subscribed so make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that bell for notifications so you never miss a video. And make sure you're subscribed to our second channel as well over there on YouTube where we throw up a bunch of extra ranked and casual VODs. Good pull here from our Hercules. Huge pull with the tower there. He had to wait on that tower shot. Unfortunately, there is a full wave of creeps here. So I'm not going to be able to finish them off because those creeps are just going to start pounding me. Great play by that Herc though. Unfortunately, another good play by Maui, staying up in the air a little bit longer. And Hachi cleared the wave while I was yearning up in the sky at the potential of a Maui kill. Good try. Just got to focus on my clear for now. For Apollo on your level order, you are going to max out 4, 1, 3, 2. That is the order you're going to be maxing out your abilities. Your ultimate is going to give you more damage. Kind of feel like we're getting rotated on right now. The way that they're playing up makes me a little bit nervous. Hachi being able to auto tech me from eight years away. We don't know where their jungler is, so we got to be a little careful here. I would love to fight this Maui while he's so low. but Okay, Kali's over by mid lefts, which means we actually can push up on this. But realistically, we should be going towards the shield buff. Herc is pressing up for the damage, but I'm not really with him. We need to go. Oh, that was that Maui just got super goofed on that jump. He absolutely got that off before the Hercules. We got lucky on that one. That was a little server diff. Yoinkity doinkity. Gonna go ahead and pop my beads. Try to get up on this guy. I'm just not going to be able to reach. I don't know if the Herc's going to be able to reach him with a pull. Maybe I can keep the Hachi here. And the Herc can get a pull on the Hachi. No, he got a little too distracted there looking at the Maui. I think at that point we probably should have just switched over and gotten some Hachi damage. So you level up the ultimate because you get a bunch of bonus damage when you level on somebody. They're going to get popped. You level up the one. Straight damage once again for the extra pop, pop. Then you're going to level up the three and then the two. Way back in the day, you used to level up Apollo's Mesmerize because it used to be a much stronger ability in terms of the protections than it is nowadays. And also, it used to be a way shorter Mez than it is. But in Modern Smite, we got to be careful. Here's what we got to do in Modern Smite. In Modern Smite, it's actually like a second and a half long Mez. Just right off the bat, which means that getting one point into it, you are going to be totally fine. And you can focus up on leveling your three. 
Now, I'm going to go over a little mechanic here once I stop getting popped by Hachi on Apollo 3 because, all right, because I'm going to die really quick is what I'm going to do to a Hachi ult and try to get behind this wall. But on Apollo 3, a lot of people don't realize that it's a movement speed buff for yourself and your team, and it's also a slow on the enemy. So Apollo leaves behind that little, like, trail area. And if you go through that little trail when you dash, you got the little dash and the little circle. It's a little bonus movement speed for you and allies in that area. So you can actually buff up your team as well when you do that little boop and you go land on them. The same way that it's a slow on an enemy, it's also a buff on your teammates. So it's kind of like the really old version of Atlas. <laughs> If you want to think about it with Apollo being such an old god, it's like a really old rendition of Atlas 3, where you give out that stim to your team. Take the struggle bar. Now, in this matchup, we are against Hachi, uh, the best hunter in Smite. Uh, he got buffed out the Wazoo not too long ago. He's been nerfed back down a little bit, uh, but not nearly anywhere uh, where he was beforehand. Massive damage buffs and attack speed buffs in his kit still. Plus, he works generically well with the current Hunter meta build. Now, this shield camp is crazy important in duo lane to be grabbing. Unfortunately, we have gotten put down early in this match. And you can see the Hachi has his Devo gloves online already. Which means we are mostly AFK in this lane until we get a jungle rotation. And unfortunately, if we don't get a jungle rotation, we're, we're genuinely AFK for upwards of 20 minutes. Which is just kind of how Smite goes right now. If you fall behind early, there's a lot of snowball potential. A lot. So you got to be careful and you just got to kind of... AFK farm to the best of your abilities. Well, that Hachi has that shield buff, even if there was an opportunity to fight. I can't go in on him until that shield buff is off. Now that it is off, I can move a little bit farther forward because I don't just immediately lose the trade because he has more protection than like a 25% HP shield, you know? Having to burn through that shield before it can even hit him as a disaster. Now, there is a fight going on in mid. I'm trying to grab these stacks, but I also do want to get over there. So, I'm going to start ulting behind my Bastion. I'm coming towards mid. So, that way they couldn't get to me. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to the Kali. So, I'm just going to try to get to this Maui. I'm going to mess him right out of that, but it looks like the fight had unfortunately... Just ended right when we started to ulti over. A lot of people at 1 HP, but I had no guarantee on that Kali back whether I was going to land in time for her back because I didn't know when she started that back. Now, I'm already behind in this lane. So, honestly, any form of rotation is kind of a disaster because this Hachi is already so massive. Hopefully, I get some love from the team recognizing that they had the Kali rotation. Because if they don't rotate over to help at this point, there's going to be a 3-4 level diff on a Hachi. And then they're going to be like, why don't we have an ADC? And it's like, why don't you help? <laughs> so, what's up, Riff? So, hopefully, that does start to happen. Hercules coming over to give a little love. That's nice, at least. Alright, Hachi back. He's got 43 freaking Devo stacks. Absolutely. We've only got 20. He's got a full level and a half, give or take, lead. Plus, he's got a full 1k lead. Which means that I will never be able to go for the 1v1 on him. So, I am AFK farming until probably the 25 minute marker. It's basically only two ways your ADC games are going to go right now. You're either going to get ahead early, and your opponent's going to have to AFK farm for 20, or you're going to get behind early, and you're going to have to AFK farm for 20. 
I don't think I've seen a duo lane game this entire season that was actually even. The second you start getting control of that shield buff, you maintain control of the shield buff for the entirety of duo. Which means that you get a massive golden XP lead. As you can see, he once again grabbed the shield buff. So I'm just going to try to do some loop-de-loops on this because there's no way for me to fight him. It's going to do some loop-de-loops and pull. And your ganks are looking cool. Can't fight back into him because he does have the shield buff. So there's no way for me to fight right there. Plus, he's got the Devo stack lead. So unfortunately for us, that's just going to be on cooldown. Going to grab a couple of wards so we can just put them out defensively. At this point, I'm not going to be able to leave my tower anymore. So we're just going to have to sit back in our tower and just kind of hide. But just kind of hide. That is the way that she goes. Gank right lane. He is, in fact, a stronger god that got an early lead. That's the way she goes. There goes my tower. Gonna have to play towards our tier two. I guess he doesn't have at this point his ulti up. So maybe there's a world where we can grab a kill here. We are certainly gonna try. Unfortunately, he might even get the kill with the 1v2. No, we barely get it there. We had to pop our beads, which sucks. Would have been nice to not have to pop our beads there. Now I'm gonna pray that this so shield buff is up. It is. Woo! That is big for us. Being able to get this shield buff will bring us up quite a bit in the gold and XP department. You can see 46 gold just for getting the big minion by itself, not even including the small ones right there. It's like a 100 gold diff every time you grab it, you know? And it's spawning quite frequently. Quite frequently. All right, we're going to go over here and grab some catch-up for the team. And by for the team, I mean also me. Now we can back up. I'm going to get myself a Dominant, which is going to help out with some of those some mana problems that we were talking about on Apollo. Going to grab myself an Aegis. Going to look at the team comp. Decently physical heavy. So for this third slot on my item, I can go either Executioner or Kins. Going to help out my team. We do have four physicals. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the Executioner for my team here provide that percent protections for the boys as well as myself and hopefully i'll be able to deal with some of those tankier characters now there's a big fight going on so i'm gonna start ulting over try to get myself involved in this fight i'm gonna look over at Scylla. i do force the Scylla ulti which is nice but now i gotta wait for some front line to go in Just start poking here in the back. Try to keep my range. Tear's going to go in hard on that. So I got to make sure that he can't get around on me to push me into them. Ah, sucks that Maui just showed up. Definitely dead for that. Man, once again, that Kali got away with one HP in that team fight. And then she came back at the very end. Just one freaking HP. And she's very smartly backing like underneath towers and stuff and putting herself in a good spot. So if I wanted to Apollo ulti over, there's not even a way to like capitalize on it. Now, unfortunately, they do have a 5k nearly, no, 6k lead at the 13 minute marker. To be perfectly honest... If you're down this much at this point in the game, the game is nearly 100% over. Uh, regardless what the F7 Warriors tell you, uh, I would say you're probably going to lose 98 out of 100 games that get down this far this early. Now, a lot of your games are going to be down this far this early. It's just how my plays. We're just in a very heavy snowball meta right now, so... When you're on the side of the snowball, you know, it feels good to crush it. And when you're on the other side, you know, it feels less good. But I don't make the game. I just play it. 
So all we can do when your game starts to snowball this hard is you basically just got to put your head down and farm for a god like Apollo that means a lot of split pushing. So I'm going to be embracing my PvE over here in the dual lane. Hachi's going to start rotating. There's no way for us to basically participate in those team fights. So we're just going to try to get our team gold by split pushing, try to get ourselves farm by split pushing, and then hopefully be able to ulti out before we die. It's really the only way we're ever going to catch up in XP. Looks like they are doing the fire giant, which basically just means more farm for me over here in duo. If we were to happen to steal that fire giant randomly... Nope, we did not. I was going to say that could be a potential comeback mechanic, but that didn't happen. I'm going to keep shoving this tier 2 tower, try to get us gold. If somebody teleports over, the tier could teleport over, but right now he's in combat with the Cleo. He's actually at 1 HP over there, too. That's unfortunate. Once again, another 1 HP that we didn't get. But we get a lot of gold for the team by getting the tier 1 and the tier 2. I'm not going to keep pushing up to the Phoenix. But I will come back and grab myself some more farm. Just try to use this opportunity to grab as much farm over on this side of the map as we can. Try to get ourselves as caught up as humanly possible. That's a lot of catch-up. When you see that much catch-up this early in the game, that's a bad sign, by the way. That's a bad sign. All right. Throw down the Executioner, then we can start working on the Kins. This game very well might end before we even get full build, so just to talk about it, we'd love up our Leather Cal into the Leader's Cal. Leader's Cal is just very good for your team, giving out that percentage power. And then your last item is more of a flex item. A lot of people like to grab the oboe in that last item slot. On Apollo, I haven't um, practiced a ton with it yet, but I do think that as a last item flex slot on Apollo, the newly kind of rebuffed up silver branch would probably work because Apollo's passive gives him a 100% on the movement speed. It should provide him with an opportunity to actually get some of those silver stacks, which means that ending it will give you not only more percent penetration, which is always nice, but should give you a massive power spike. Uh, if you go look at the silver branch nowadays, you get 10% more physical pen, which is great. You get attack speed and power, which is all great, but then you get that bonus power for capping on that attack speed. And because you get 100% from the Apollo passive, when your passive comes up, I guarantee you that turns into like an 80 plus physical power item, which is awesome. Now, the enemy team was seemingly over a duo. So you know what that means as Apollo when you're down. We're going to be shoving up left lane and trying to get ourselves some presence over here. There's no way we defend tier twos down as much as we are. I can try to back if I need to and get over to the boys. Here's tier. If he's keeping me here, I do wonder. I was going to say I do wonder if the whole team is rotating over here, but they're not. Going to keep my eye over on mid. No point for me to be there unless it's a Phoenix defense. I'm going to try to get us a tier one really quick. Going to pop that mez just for a little bonus. Physical defenses. Tier's not here. We do get the tier one. I can back and try to ult the end to help the boys. Hopefully some people are low for us to go get involved. Looking towards that Scylla in the back. Going to land right on top of him. Go for the dash. Little auto mez combo. Pop the preemptive beads. Now I got to start getting my little butt running away from a tear. Pop the Aegis there because that's going to smack me in the head. Unfortunately, I am going to get grabbed by Maui, which means I am going to die. Because that is a lot of CC between the Maui and the tier but knock on wood they didn't get a phoenix yet which is huge the haji just dashed in and 
could be killable from the Odin. They're quite low. Honestly, best case scenario, we get another tower over and left. We get a kill on the Scylla. There we go. This is huge. Literally huge right there. Now we're only down 5k gold. We still have a long way to go in this one. And there's no world where we turn this around shorter than another 15, 20 minutes. But hypothetically, if you were going to win one of those two out of 100 games, you, you would need to start it right there. But we still got a long way to go. And you know what this long road is going to have in it? It is going to have a lot more split pushing and a lot more XP, baby. So if you look at the XP department, it may not be the most dynamic gameplay experience, but we have actually caught up to the Hachi in XP. And now I'm only 600 gold down uh, as well. We're getting some beautiful pings. Just absolutely wonderful pings right on top of us. Gonna pick up a kill right there on the Kali. And we're gonna keep on farming. Uh, here's a little piece of advice as well. When your team goes for those sweet, sweet pings, you can always throw down that mute button. I think they were pinging about the Kali being there at low HP. I don't think they were like pinging like what do you do i think that was uh there's a collie over here ping but if your team ever does start pinging your brains out you've always got that sweet vgs mute right there always keep that in mind gonna keep the pressure over here and right which in this case is hopefully gonna force them over to me it looks like they are so i'm gonna start my back which is gonna free up room over by the fire giant not that we can do the fire giant, but it keeps their team away from it. <laughs> you know, keep them away. Now I need a hundred more gold so I can get my leader's cow. Once my leader's cow is online, I'm actually online. And you can see that now I've actually got the XP lead on Hachi. So he was in a lot of those fights, which means he wasn't farming, which means I was AFK. And by God, I didn't get a lot of PvP damage in that time, so I'm sure I've got a whopping 5,000 total PvP damage, but I caught up in XP, I caught up in gold, and I am no longer behind at the 22-minute marker. It took me a solid 20 minutes to catch up from a two-minute deficit, but alas, you can only use the tools that Smite gives you. They do got to be careful over there. That's a low Scylla. I am going to start the ulti. I don't know if I'm going to land immediately. Kind of waiting for the Scylla dash. There it is. Coming around the outside right now. I'm going to land right down on him. Should be able to pick up that kill. We forced the beach. Looking at Haji. Got to throw down the Mez right there. That's his beach and Aegis. I'm going to go for the dash on him. Great. Freaking Maui peel. So now I'm just going to turn around on the tier. Had to use both of my actives right there. But this is a huge fight. This is even bigger than our last fight. While I don't think we're going to be able to run down and get the Titan, we should be able to hopefully get a Phoenix off of this. Yeah, only 20 seconds. We should get mid and then back up and go for the Fire Giant. 10 seconds. It's just too risky. We go to Fuego. We go to Fuego. We go to Fuego. Yeah, 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 yeah. If we get the Fire right here, this is huge. We have now evened up the game. I swear to you, this is not rigged. This is not pre-recorded. This is not literally your chances of winning a game down that far are straight up less than 5%. And at this point in the game, it's 50-50. We literally 50-50 evened this one up. Now we got to be careful. Because this could be a little bit of a throw here. They're all back up. We couldn't burn the fire fast enough. Scylla currently in her ultimate. That is a very low Kali. I got to keep the tier in combat. Now, he is just straight running at us. Got to be careful here. I'm going to back up. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. 
That's okay. We're going to start working into that silver branch. We grab ourselves a sentry ward. And now we got to go make sure we have eyes on the fire giant. But I'm going to head over to this right side. And because we already have the mid Phoenix down, we have got a lot of map pressure. And if I can get over in this solo lane, solo lane, if I can get over in this duo lane and bring them away from the solo lane, it's going to force at least one person to have to back. Now, Kali is already here. And my chances of winning a Kali 1v1 are pretty low. So I got to keep my distance on that guy. I can't let him blink on me. They know that I'm over here now. I'm hoping that the Kali got just as scared of me as I was of him. Okay, Scylla is here. They're all here. I got to start the ult immediately to get out. And I am going to be able to get out. We should be going for middle lane. There was three over on the right-hand side. Okay. This whole thing over, we've got huge numbers advantage right now. Great poke on the Maui. They know my ulti is down, so I got to be careful with that. Good poke on the Scylla. Maui and Tyr have been doing a very good job zoning this game. That sucks. Maui's going to get the yoink off. I've got Aegis for the Scylla. Looks like she is wanting to chase for me, but hadn't quite yet. Kali is going to chase me down, though. Oh! I'm going to get the Mez on him, which forces his beat. At this point, I'm just trying to live as long as humanly possible. I'm not going to get a kill here, but the longer that I live, the more I keep them away from doing the Fire Giant, the more I keep them away from our Phoenixes, because if everybody else dies, they can probably run it down and end the game. Okay. That could have been better, but honestly, also could have been worse. We bought a lot of time there at the end. It did suck that Kali still had her beads up. Otherwise, we actually might have been able to get away. Oh, that's a very low Kali. There we go. That was a greedy play from that Kali. In fact, they're getting very greedy right now being here. My ultimate will be basically up when I respawn. Oh, she can't dash out because she's going to die to the Odin cage. Great play. God, Warriors, huh? Freaking Warriors. Oh, look at that. He's got a Relic Dagger and a Wing Blade. That boy is speedy, speedy, speedy. We've got the Silver Branch online for the damage, damage, damage. Now, I am not going to run over to the duo lane to start split pushing like I have been during these last ones. I'm going to run over towards this Fire Giant because if the team can get one more kill there, they're all so low. There it is. I'm going to head over, and we should start the Fire Giant. We've got Scylla dead for 20. we got our Morgana coming up. I'm going to take this red buff. So that way I've got a little bit of bonus damage just specifically for burning down this fire. I am going to start just doing it right now. And once we get somebody here that starts doing damage on it, I'm going to reset it. So that way I don't have the aggro anymore. Because we don't actually have any secure, but we do have a lot of burn. They just warded, unfortunately. So we aren't going to be able to get this. All right. I got to go heal up off of blue. Unfortunately, this tier just has so many wards out to teleport to. Coming back in towards the fight, I got to be careful because I do not have active. So 30, going to drop down this little speed buff here in the back for us. Man, we just can't get to this fire giant in time. Also, unfortunately, with our comp in terms of the Fuego, they have much better secure with Scylla. So we're going to have to kind of just be chill. So our job as the ADC in these fights is burning down the objective, whether that be a Phoenix or a Fire Giant. If there's no objective to burn down, then we're trying to kill the tanks right in front of us, right? Apollo's a little bit different because sometimes you're going to ulti to dive to finish off that kill in the back. Kind of like a little a new wah role play. But for the most part, in general, your job as an ADC is trying to burn down those tanks. Mages are really not good at killing tanks right now, which means it's my job to try to put this Maui in tier down because if they run up Morgana, chances are Morgana is just going to get wrecked.
Titans have spawned over on the left hand side. Running in towards this tier. Great damage there from our Cleo. And we are going to be able to put him down. Now I'm switching over to the Maui, just like how we talked about. He ulted right on top of me, which is actually totally fine. Now I'm going to start popping the ult. Looking towards Kali, waiting for her to jump. Come on, you know you want to. There it is. Now he's getting zoned out. He can't go backwards because he knows I'm trying to land on him. Popping the mez for the Hachi right here. Chasing down the Hachi. Trying to finish up that kill. Couldn't save our Morgana. That sucks. If we can save our Morgana right there, we get a guaranteed win. Attacking the Titan here is pretty risky. I like the attack right lane. We're better at killing Phoenixes than we are killing Fire Giants with this comp. The Titans are going to go battle it out and left. Okay. Gonna mess that Maui, start to run away. We got to go deal with the Titans and left. But we've got two Phoenixes down, which is awesome. Whoa! I'm actually not going to Aegis that because I'm okay from that combo. I was at 100% HP, so no point to uh, Aegis for the Scylla. Now, if we grab this Gold Fury, this is a Primal Fury, so we're going to get some bonus damage out there. You can see that I've got 38 stacks with that Silver Branch. So when my passive is up, I am popping bro that is so much power from one item that's actually a literal hundred power item i think yeah that's a hundred power item how many hundred power items in smite okay we are gonna grab that bonus damage for when we get dove gonna grab ourselves a red pot unfortunately i could not get myself a sentry ward which sucks to be fair, that blows. But Red Pot gives you 40 physical power, which is like a whole item in Smite. So always buy that Red Pot if you can at the end of the game. Huge damage increase. Now, we do not have better secure than them, but we've got two Phoenixes down, which means they have to go defend those Phoenixes, which means they have to kind of YOLO in here if they want to defend. We know the Scylla's not here. Tyr is going to ult in and try to steal this. Oh my god, they literally got it with their tanks. That is so unfortunate, bro. I don't even think it was the tier that got it. I think it was a literal Maui ult. Okay, so what the team should have done there, you could see right at about the 2k marker, they were coming in super hard. I think he got in with a bomb, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, what we should have done is we knew that Scylla wasn't here, right? We saw Scylla over in the duo lane. What we should have done there was stop doing damage to the fire at like the 4k marker and just turned and killed the tanks. Now, it might still be okay. I'm going to try to burn down this Phoenix. Apollo, very good at killing Phoenixes. I've got to go ahead and Aegis right here and try to dash out of this. This is really bad for us. I'm trying to get over towards my Morgana. We do get the Phoenix. But we need to retreat because if we all die here, we literally lose the game. So everybody that can back needs to back. Now, they very well might go for a YOLO. They've got three dead for 40 seconds. We've got three of their Phoenixes down. Hark is up in 30. This is going to be a very scary play for us right here. Kali's over and right. They're actually not super grouped. I, must mark this on my map. I cannot die for this Phoenix. Luckily, we have a tier two up still and left, which makes our Titan a little bit tankier. Hurts up in 10. There's no way that they end this as long as we don't die. There's no way. They're going to try to get double Phoenixes off of this, though, and that they might get. Uh-huh. That they might get. Now, this is a risky chase. They do have three, maybe even four people with that enhanced fire. I don't have any actives. Up. They don't have their Scylla here. Yeah, that is a risky, 
A risky chase with only with only two people over there. They knew that this could happen, but at this point now we're committed, basically. Their Scylla still won't be here. Is ready. Boy's got to be very careful on this one. I'm trying to get in range to help without getting wrecked, which is a tough ask. God. Okay, I'm going to go for the double mess. Damn! Not going to be able to dash away. I got Scylla. I'm a monster over the wall for 1,700. She had gotten here just in time. So unfortunate. That is probably going to be game unless Herc can live here. Well, well, he's trying. There's a lot of creeps coming in, but Herc did live. Actually, and because Herc lived, Cleo's going to be up in 10. And it looks like they're actually not going to be able to end. Wow, they threw a little bit as well. Their Titan is down to half HP. Team's going to try to chase out again. Their Enhanced Fire Giants will be running down in about 30 to 60 seconds. Pop another Potion of Power, get another Sentry Ward. We are going to get a little bit of a break off of that. Unfortunately, that fight was ugly. And it still would have been okay for us if we wouldn't have gotten I'm a monster one shot over the wall. That was a tragedy. Okay. We still got to deal with all of these creeps in the base. Fire giant is spawning in a minute. We got to watch out for that Skilla. Gotta watch out for the skill up. We gotta get these creeps pushed up on the right side. Ooh. Now, the fact that we brought back this game at all to where we're still in it at the 36 minute marker is pretty crazy. So, Cleo wants to go attack the Titan, which is kind of a crazy play, but. I guess if Cleo's calling for it, we have to do it before their left Phoenix spawns. Which means we gotta just YOLO in for it. I'm ulting in. The Cleo is here. Gotta pop the beach. I'm throwing down the mez. Oh my god, it is going to be close! And we do get the back door. The call was made. We had to do it before the Phoenix respawned in order to get the damage off on the Titan. So we follow up on the call that was basically a win or lose YOLO call. But sometimes when you're down 10k at the 10 minute marker, you gotta go for the YOLO call. And holy freaking crap, it worked, dude. Well. Oh my god. On one hand, getting down that much gold and that much XP early sucks but on the other hand we did go ahead and show you how you have to play out the game when you get that far behind which is in fact going to happen in your games in fact give or take half of your games you're going to be losing at the start maybe more so what do you do you put your head down you, get, you be really bored for 20 minutes, and you PvE, PvE, PvE. And as expected, your PvP numbers are not going to be very exciting. Because for half of the game, you're not fighting anybody, anywhere, and building up any damage numbers. But what you can do is you can split push towers, you can get yourself and your team gold, and you can try to catch up in your build so you can actually get to a late game stage of the game where you actually have... A fighting chance guys and so that is your season of souls apollo guy don't forget to subscribe on youtube and ring that bell for notifications and of course make sure you subscribe to our second youtube channel as well for some extra twitchy content